for your assignment, you you have to do a regression analysis with with a specific data set called regression.save. If you open up that data set, you're, you have a specific outcome variable and you have specific predictor variables, and I want you to do this in a stepwise fashion. So let's, let's run one just so you'll see what I mean. So we're going to run a regression analysis. We're going to analyze our data, go to regression, right? Regression, and this is going to be multiple, multiple regression analysis. Multiple regression analysis. You just go under linear regression. So you go to regression and linear. Okay. So your dependent variable, I believe, in your homework assignment is academic achievement. I'm going to pick something else. So your, I think yours is how well you do in school, just like in the example we did in in class right now. Notice that this variable is called school performance at wave one. W one stands for the first wave. A wave is a point in time when you collect data. Let's let's try to predict. Oh, how about um? Mm, let's predict something like um. Let's see. Somatic symptoms. Those are when one is depressed, one feels some somatic symptoms, including anxiety symptoms, uh, sleepiness, etc. Okay, let's pick that as our outcome. And for our predictors, we're going to have. Let's find a good variable here. Alcohol, right? Impulsivity. And how about um, safety from crime in their neighborhood? There you go. So three variables we're going to pick. Now, you'll notice that there was a button here that says next, right? So these are the two variables I'm interested in, right? Oh, this is actually marijuana use, but I'll, well, I'll, take, I'll fix that, go back and get alcohol use. But those are the variables I'm interested in, alcohol use and impulsivity. I'm going to add those in because those are my er variables of interest, but I'm not going to add them in yet because I want to look at first what's most strongly correlated to somatic symptoms. So I'll, I think the most strong correlates, there will be known correlates of somatic symptoms would be something like depressed symptoms and something like positive affect, and something like interpersonal distress. Those are three variables that are known to be related. And they all come from the same survey, so they're known to be related to this outcome. Just like if you were trying to look at the effects, try to predict academic performance, probably variables like person's sex, whether they're male or female, or socioeconomic status, those variables would be known predictors of academic achievement. So you want to control for those first. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to control for these first. So we're entering them in block number one. So now let's hit add, and we're going to have a second block. In our second block, we'll put in the variables of interest. We really wanted to know whether, where is it here? Alcohol, that's what I wanted. Alcohol affects one's somatic symptoms. And we also talked about impulsivity. We wanted to know those two, those two have an effect on, on, on somatic symptoms above and beyond the effect of the other depression subscales, right? Depressed effect, negative effect, and interpersonal distress. We're going to use a method called enter. Enter, you just enter the variables and to see what happens. There's, a, there's other more iterative methods like stepwise that take into account the effect of each variable before adding the others. I don't like those so much because they take your work away from it. This requires you to actually think about what the predictor variables are. So let's go ahead and and run this analysis. Do we need any specific statistics? You probably want descriptives, right? You probably want that. Um, let's see. Let's go to. I'm, I'm going to hold up on all these collinearity diagnoses, etc. Just hit that. Let's see any other options. This is for. We're not going to worry about that because we're not going to look at these. Um, we're not using one of those. Those methods that'll do it for you. How about plots? We're not going to do that either right now. You know, there, there's a lot more we could learn, but I want to get this, give you some basic knowledge right now so that you can at least know, have an idea of what's going on with regression. And you can build this knowledge from here. So we're just going to do the prediction. So let's go ahead and run this and find out what our outcome is. Okay. So we get descriptive statistics in case you need to write a descriptive statistics table, which I can't remember off the top of my head if I'm asking you to do. But if I do, this is where you get the stats, right? Descriptive stats. 
means and standard deviation, some correlations. Some of these correlations are pretty strong. Again, these variables came from the same the same scale. Like for instance, somatic is has a 0.67 or 0.68 correlation with the depressed subscale of this the CESD depression survey. That's okay. Multicollinearity is bad when the correlations are around 0.8 or 0.9. 0.6, that's strong, but you know that's not 0.8 or 0.9. So we can live with that. Okay, so those are some correlations. Now look at, let's look at the analysis itself. The adjusted R square is pretty good. It's 47% of the variation in our 47% uh, of the variation in our in our outcome is predicted by these predictor variables. We did a pretty darn good job. And, and the difference between the two models isn't really that bad, right? I didn't ask for R square change actually, so I should probably ask for R square change. Let's go back analyze regression linear Let's see I didn't ask for R square change yeah that save button isn't what we need here R square change if you want to save the data you can use it okay did you see where I did that under stats at model fit R square change descriptives estimates if you want confidence intervals you can add those two okay now you'll see that we have the R square change here. Uh, here it is, R square change. So really from the beginning to, for that first model, you had an increase of 0 0.73, 0 0.473, but that really that those, the addition of those two other variables didn't add anything. They didn't really add anything to the model. In fact, they're not significant. The R square change is not significant. See, it's P is above 0 0.05, 0 0.10, whatever. But, so in this case, we're going to look at what what is significant in the two models. So this is the first model without the two variables that we added, drinking and impulsivity, and then this is the model including drinking and impulsivity. So let's see what the effect was. The only thing that was significant, really nothing was significant here. However, if we use traditional, if we use traditional, oh, sorry, here it is. Oh, there was something significant. I was looking at that. I was looking at the wrong value. It's those first related variables from the same subscale, from the same CESD measure that were related. So they were significantly and positively related, right? So we had, for instance, we had depressed subscale. Each unit increase in the depressed subscale led to a 0.543 increase in, in our outcome variable, which was somatic subscale. And then we had positive affect led to a 0.147 increase and interpersonal distress of 0.314. Now let's look at the standardized values so we can make a direct comparison and as you can see that and these are really all on the same scale. So the standardized one in this case doesn't add that much. They're all on the same scale. They come from the same measure. But at the relative strength you can see that depressed symptom is, is much stronger in its effect on, on somatic symptoms than any of the other variables. Okay, but if you wanted to compare them with something else that's on a different scale, it's just 30 days smoking, you can see that that beta is really small, 0 0.01, which is a very small effect compared to 0.646. Okay, so that's all you have to do for this week, and this is this wraps up our our course. All right, in terms of the this, this, the video, so enjoy studying for the final. Okay, and. Um, Think about all the wonderful times we had together this semester. Yeah, and all the weird videos I did. All right, take care. Bye.